my Lord. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. my Lord. Were you there when they nailed it to a tree? Were you there when they nailed it to the tree? Oh, 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 oh. sometimes it causes me to tremble. so glad that you have come here this morning to join us on this Easter morning. It's an Easter morning like none of us have ever experienced before. Uh, being here in this place, in this empty sanctuary, I am keenly aware of not only the absence of the congregation and the people, but I'm also keenly aware of maybe this is more like that first Easter morning than we usually experience. We don't have the beautiful flowers that decorate the, the front chancel of the sanctuary. We did not have our breakfast brunch time before worship. Yet we have all gathered here this morning to wait for the resurrection of Jesus, to come and experience that empty tomb. And as we worship this morning, I want to encourage you to, to get your Bibles, and turn to the Gospel of John. That's where we'll be this morning. From John chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb came and told Peter and John, the one Jesus loved, that the body wasn't there. But they didn't understand that Jesus had risen from the dead. This morning, as we continue to, to enter into this Easter worship, I want to share with you part of a reading by Frederick Buechner uh, as he talks about Easter. He writes, The Gospels are far from clear as to just what happened. It began in the dark. The stone had been rolled aside. 
Matthew alone speaks of an earthquake. In the tomb, there were two white-clad figures, or possibly just one. Mary Magdalene seems to have gotten there before anyone else. There was a man she thought at first was the gardener. Perhaps Mary, the mother of James, was with her, and another woman named Joanna. One account says Peter came too with the other disciples. Elsewhere, the suggestion is that there were only the women, and that the disciples, who were somewhere else, didn't believe the women's story when they heard it. There was a sound of people running, of, of voices. Matthew speaks of fear and great joy. Confusion was everywhere. There was no agreement even as to the role of Jesus himself. Did he appear at the tomb? Or only later? Where? To whom did he appear? And what did he say? What did he do? It's not really even much of a story when you come right down to it. And that is, of course, the power of it. It has a ring of truth to it. If the gospel writers had wanted to tell it in a way to convince the world that Jesus indeed rose from the dead, they would have done it with all the skill and fanfare they could muster. Here there is no skill, no real fanfare. They seem to simply be telling it the way it was. The narrative is as fragmented, shadowy, incomplete as life itself. When it comes to just what happened, there can be no absolute certainty that something unimaginable happened. There can be no doubt. The symbol of Easter is the empty tomb. And that is what we are here this morning to experience. The empty tomb of Jesus and what that brings to our lives today. Let us open in a word of prayer together. Uh, gracious God, we are here this morning coming to look for Jesus, coming to experience the empty tomb as Mary did, coming to look and wonder what had happened as Peter and John have. Help us to remember what you have said, the prophecy of the resurrection that you would rise again, Help us to remember what you have called us to do and have called us to be in this time and place. Increase our faith. Remove our doubt and our fear and give us hope for a new day. Gracious God, reveal Jesus alive to us today. Reveal the empty tomb to us. Reveal new life. For us. And we ask this, gracious God, in the name of Jesus, who lives again. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Do you join now in singing this morning, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heaven and earth reply, Alleluia. Lives again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where, O oh, death, is now thy sting, Alleluia. Once he died our souls to save, Alleluia. Where the victory, O oh grave, Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done, Alleluia. 
fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise. Alleluia. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of eternal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Now where Christ has led, Alleluia, following our exalted head, Alleluia, made like Him, like Him we rise, Alleluia, ours the cross, the grave, the sky, Alleluia. You are giving and forgiving, never blessed, never blessed. Fountain of the joy of living, ocean, depth of happy rest. You are the one who saves, you are the one who saves. You are the one whose hands lift us from the grave. You are the light of life, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sin away. You are the one who saves. You are the one who saves. You are the one who tends. Lift us from the grave. You are the light of life. The everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sin away. Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, My sin, my cross, my shame Rising again, I bless your name You are my all in, 
numb When I fall down you pick me up When I am dry you fill my cup You are my all in all Jesus Lamb of God We truly are here this morning to experience the resurrection, to experience the new life and the new hope that we have through Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus promised, he prophesied that he would, uh, after three days, rise again. And we are here this morning not only to experience that anew, but to remember that each and every day. I'm going to ask that you bow in prayer with me this morning. Uh, lifting up those needs that are upon our hearts. Uh, there are many needs in our communities, around our world, that just need to be lifted before God. Because God has promised us that when we pray, as the people of God, when we pray for healing, when we pray for our communities, our country, our world, that God hears us. He welcomes those prayers. And God will answer them according to God's will. The best prayer we can always pray is your will be done. And so this morning we pray that prayer. Would you bow with me this morning? Gracious God, thank you that we are here in this place, wherever that place may be. Uh, here in Dallas, across Oregon, even across the country, and maybe around the world. Uh, Lord, I do know that there are believers, there are Christians who are lifting up prayers this morning prayers for healing from illnesses from this COVID-19 virus from cancer healing from mental and emotional stresses and illnesses healing from trauma and addictions Gracious God, we lift them before you. We pray your healing and your will to be done, for we know that you are the ultimate healer in wherever and whatever our brokenness is. And we also remember that uh, it is through our weaknesses and our brokenness that your strength is made, made perfect in our lives. We pray, Lord, for those who are in need this morning, maybe even those with us around us, for those who are looking for work, for housing, for those with relationship issues and brokennesses within their family. Lord, for those who are making decisions and choosing life paths, we lift them before you. We pray, gracious God, for your hand to continue to work through your church, uh, through your church as it is uh, distributed in the communities, in our states, in our nation, and around the world. Even though we are not able to meet together, you have called us as the people of God, the people of God to meet separate yet apart. As we are dispersed to our homes and in our communities, continue to use us in ways that uh, fulfill your gospel. Fulfill what you are calling us to do and be. Lord, we pray for our communities. And Lord, I specifically lift before you the community of Dallas here this morning and all the churches who are present here in this place. Lord, we are not only one church in Dallas, but we are individual communities of faith as well. So Lord, as we worship this morning, as we are gathered as we are, we just ask for your hand of grace and mercy 
of leading and provision. Lord, we ask all of this uh, as we remember our blessings as well. Blessings of, of family, of homes, of provisions. Mostly blessings of your love and your life that we have each day. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to continue this morning reading from the Gospel of John. If you remember what I read just a little bit ago, uh, Peter and John had gone into the tomb. They saw that the burial cloths were folded up neatly, but Jesus wasn't there. It says they saw and believed, but they did not understand that Jesus had to rise from the dead. And John picks up telling the story in verse 10. It says, Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look inside the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. And I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news I have seen the Lord, as she told them that he had said these things to her. Can you put yourself in, in Mary's place for a moment? Maybe even in the disciples' place. There were so many things that were going on, so many things that they had experienced in the last few days. From a wonderful gathering and meal to the shock of the arrest, the horrors of the trial and crucifixion of Jesus, and the grief and finality of Jesus being buried in that tomb and the stone being placed across the entrance. Or so they thought it was final. The ladies, the women came to the tomb. Other gospels say to bring spices to finish preparing his body for the burial. The disciples didn't understand what was going on. They didn't understand that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. Their grief, their shock, their horror, all that they had experienced kept them from remembering what Jesus had said kept them from wanting to really experience who Jesus was. So Peter and John went back to the house they were staying in. Sad, depressed, upset, hopeless. Mary st stayed there, grieving, crying, then she experienced, she saw two angels. And they simply asked her a question. Who is it that you are looking for? And then she saw a man and didn't recognize it to Jesus, it being Jesus. And again, she was asked, who are you looking for? 
thinking he was the gardener, said, Where have you put him? And I will go get him. And it was a simple word that allowed Mary to fully recognize Jesus with her. A simple word, her name, Mary. And it was that simple word, that name spoken by someone she loved that opened her eyes, opened her heart, opened her very soul to, to what was really happening, the new life that was actually happening in her midst. I wonder sometimes, even in today's world with what's happening around us and within us, if we have lost hope. If we have lost hope and we forget what Jesus has said to us, we forget the new life that Jesus offers us, not just the eternal life in heaven, but the new life that we live each and every day. Have we stopped recently and really listened to Jesus calling our name, speaking to our very souls, and saying, hey, I'm here. It's when we hear that name, our names, when we hear that call, that still small voice that we remember what Jesus has done for us. We remember what Jesus has called us to. We remember that we have that same power in our lives that raised Jesus from the dead, that resurrection power that says to us, you have a new way of life. You have a new way of living. You have a new way of being in the world today. You have hope in the midst of hopelessness. You have life in the midst of death. You have life in the midst of depression. You have life that only Jesus can give to us. When Mary heard her name, when Mary heard what, she, what was being said to her, her life changed. And your life changes. My life changes in the midst of everything that's going on when we hear Jesus speaking our name. So this morning, I want you to take just a moment. I want you to just pause where you're at and listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what Jesus has called you and is calling you to do and be. Listen for your name. Listen to the hope that Jesus offers us. Listen to what Jesus has called us. Listen to who Jesus is calling us to do or what he's calling us to do, but more importantly, who he's calling us to be in the world today. Part of who Jesus is calling us to do uh, and be in the world today is to remember what he has done for us. And obviously on this Easter morning, we remember the new life that he has given us. But that new life comes because he has sacrificed himself on the cross. And on that meal before his arrest, that meal he met with his disciples and he held up a loaf of bread. And he, and he said, this is my bread, this is my body. This bread is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you eat it, remember me. He also took a cup from the table and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink this cup, remember me. So this morning, I encourage you to gather your communion supplies together. I encourage you to gather the bread and the cup. As we pray this morning, prepare your hearts to remember what Jesus has done for us. Prepare your hearts to remember, but also prepare your hearts to live a new life that is full of hope and power in the resurrection. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we are here to remember the resurrection, the new life, we also remember the sacrifice that Jesus has given to us. 
the body which is given, the blood which is shed. Lord, as we take these elements this morning, we ask that you help us to remember, help us never to forget, and let us live each day a new and powerful resurrection life. Amen. Take your bread and remember the new life that he has given to us. This is Jesus' body, which is given for you and for me. Take your cup. Take your cup and remember the blood shed for the forgiveness of sin, of my sin and yours. As we prepare to close this morning, I want to read to you another reading by Henry Nouwen this time, one of my favorite theologians. He writes this about Easter, and it's so true. It says, the Easter season is a time of hope. There is still fear. There is still a painful awareness of sinfulness, but there's also a light breaking through. Something new is happening, something that goes beyond the changing moods of our life, we can be joyful or sad, optimistic or pessimistic, tranquil or angry. But the solid stream of God's presence moves deeper than the small waves of our hearts and minds. Easter brings the awareness that God is present, even when his presence is not directly noticed. Easter brings the good news that, although things seem to get worse in the world, the evil one has already been overcome. Easter allows us to affirm that although God seems very distant, and although we remain preoccupied with many little things, our Lord walks with us on the road and keeps explaining the scriptures to us. Thus, there are many rays of hope casting their light on our way through life. This morning, if there's a message that I want to leave with you, I want to leave to you the message of hope. Hope that the resurrection brings to us Hope in new life, new opportunities, new possibilities for today, for the future, for all that we have, all that we face. There is much uncertainty in the world today. There is much that is unknown. There is much pain, much brokenness. Yet we have hope. We have hope because of the resurrection. We have new life because of the resurrection. And we have power to live each day. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and I. It's not something that we hope for that will come maybe eventually. That spirit and that power lives within each of us and brings us hope and reminds us of what Jesus has done for us. So this morning... Let us sing our closing song together, Resurrection Power.
bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. I'm dressed in your royalty. Your Holy Spirit lives in me. I see my past has been redeemed. The new has come. Now I have resurrection power. Living on the inside, Jesus. You have given us freedom, no longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom, freedom. You have given us freedom, you have given us freedom. My chains are gone, freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom, hallelujah. Now I have resurrection power, living on the inside, Jesus. You have given us freedom, no longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom, now I have Resurrection power, living in the light of your good. You have given us freedom, no longer bound by sin and darkness. Living in the light of your goodness, you have given us freedom. May you go today full of hope and the resurrection. May you hear your name that is called by our living Lord and Savior. Jesus calls each one of us, calls us out of hopelessness, out of the darkness, to allow the light of God to shine in us and through us each and every day. May you have a blessed and happy Easter. May you experience the joys of the resurrection each and every day. Now go in peace and share the good news of the resurrection with all those around you. Given us freedom, freedom. You have given us freedom. You have given us freedom.